All right. So, um, top of the top item. Whoops. Top item is. Oh, would help if I had the caps lock key in the correct position. All right, so top item here is uh, arrival, new arrival. And let's let's get the, the show. So I'm gonna stop sharing and Diraj, share your camera and show us what you got. Yes, so. Can you just give me one second and show me? And thanks very much again, Diraj, for your help with the Jenkins Contributor Summit in June. That was really exceptional. You were wonderful. You made it. You made it much more credible when the newcomer contributor segment had two brand new contributors who were saying, "Yeah, this is how you become a contributor." Thank you so much. The pleasure is all mine. So I'm trying to. Uh, okay, I think this might work now. No, it's not working. So can you give me like a few more minutes? I'll try to rejoin. We, we certainly, oh, no issue. We'll, we'll just, we can switch and share the screen and we'll bring it, bring you on later. Yes, that would be great. That's great. Yeah, that, that what you'd shown us earlier was great as well. So we'll, we'll do that. All right, so topics that I had on my list, technical writing conventions. I've got a, a question that Meg really needs a consultation with you because me talking about these kind of topics is really dangerous. I tend to say things that are just wrong. And then the Jumbotron update, upcoming events, Hacktoberfest. Uh, what other topics do we want to put on the list? Uh, let's see, Diraj, there was one I think that you and I should probably discuss, which is weekly change log automation or weekly change log. Yeah, weekly change log and weekly change log automation. I haven't done my, my review yet, but I think it's worth a discussion for your sense of it, et cetera. There was a concern raised by uh, Daniel and I wanted to hear your opinion, what you think. Um, I'm sorry, is this for me? Uh, yeah, but we'll get to it on the agenda. Just, it's a, a topic. Any other topics we need to include? I'm mm. muted. I'm talking away and you're ignoring me. Sorry, um, Meg. <laughs> that's quite not your fault. Um, for DevOps world, um, did we do anything? Did we try to virtual like get people to contribute for the first time like we did when we had in person DevOps world? And if not, do we want to try it or is it just too much with the remote? Good, good question. So the contributor summit would be a really good place good place for first time first time involvement there because for instance we've got a user user forum a user presentations forum ah and and it it, it was really cool when at the last contributor summit um Johannes presented hey here's how i'm doing using jenkins in biological research Ooh. And another presented, hey, here's how we're using Jenkins to do software development for, um, in their case, Elastic uh, and Elasticsearch. And, and there are all sorts of other cool stories like that. And user presentations would be a great excuse for someone to be a first time presenter. Say, hey, here's how we're doing Jenkins. Yeah. That's so cool. Do, uh, as an aside to that, do we also take that stuff and publish it on the we did. It's like we did. Article. Awesome. Because like that's so cool to be able to continue that on. And yes. I don't know if that there's like a use case section of our website. <laughs> well, <laughs> like well, and on how detailed they get. Right, and, and and there are a lot of things like that, right? right. What well, we we were we were we were seeking to better understand the users, and and we, I think we achieved that. Mm -hmm. But the what we didn't what we didn't do then was we've got more to capitalize on it using what Johannes did and what others did to say, look, here's a story. Jenkins is the way is a good example of those kinds yeah. of stories. All right, and Diraj says that his camera is now working, so I'm going to switch off the 
my share and let's 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 see what you got diraj sure mark so um we see you that's great all right so hi everyone my name is diraj and i just got a new gift from jenkins and this is how it looks like <laughs> right and a good thing here jenkins are dire as well <laughs> so see, i can so you have the contributor location where you've contributed content multiple times right there on your t-shirt. Hardly anybody gets the exact, certainly the Git plugin is not on any t-shirt that I've ever seen. So that's cool. Well, that's just exactly. unfair, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so thank well, you so much for your efforts to get me this. Thank you. Excellent. And thank you for your contribution, Diraj. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so let's go back to agenda. And so the idea was we've got first this technical writing conventions topic. Oh, we were trying to figure out if there are other topics. Meg, you had a question on DevOps world. So is it okay if we take that further when we get to that in the agenda? Absolutely. Uh, Just the question is what all are we doing there? Right. We probably need to start tracking it, right? Good. Yep. Uh, Alyssa's uh, and Oleg's ask me anything is another good one, ah. but it's already done and we're past the point where we could take new speakers. So, so it's, yeah, we've had our chance there. Right. Anything else? Oh, yes. <laughs> I have two doubts regarding the change log that I've generated right now. So okay. it would be just two minutes so that we can add as well. Good. All right. So let's put that one right before weekly change log automation. Excellent. Okay. Anything else? Okay. First topic then technical writing convention. So Meg, this is one where I need some guidance from someone who is actually a, a professional technical writer. And so here's the, here's the context. Um, we've got some grammar and punctuation fixes. I'm going to make this big enough to read. So what I did was I commented here on, let's see, what was it? Um, oh, the change was from in order to upgrade to, to upgrade and then ends the sentence with a preposition to take care of. And I'm not accustomed to ending sentences with prepositions. Help me out on this. Again, I'm muted and you, you are ignoring me. Um, you are correct. And to take care of is kind of informal anyhow. Um, there are a few details and steps that are required. Oh, oh, very good idea. Okay. All right. Let's, let's do that. As I think before I unmuted, I said to take care of is pretty informal for written. Right. Yes, dangling prepositions are verboten. Okay. All right, great. Okay. Um, all right, so then, all right, and a and few details. Here's Sentences that begin with there are kind of a bad idea too. Sometimes you can't avoid them, but okay. it's weak. All right. Uh, okay, so, so. Uh, see, for okay, me. So I haven't seen the whole thing. This all, it sounds kind of weak and namby pamby is what there we're about to go into a list of the steps that you need to use to upgrade correct yes yeah so why don't we just say these are the steps required to upgrade from jdk 8 to jdk 11. Ah, ah, 8 to 11. Well, very good okay These are the steps to upgrade from. Or the steps to upgrade.
from blah, 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 R, colon. That would be even tighter, wouldn't it? To upgrade the JVM used to run Jenkins, more there are a few details here, here. These are the steps and some, okay, like that? Um, or yeah, here? Yeah, I would go back and say, get rid of, these are, start with the steps. Ah, there we go, okay shorter the better right okay excellent thank you okay good then the next one was uh, and this is one i'm accustomed to using the impersonal form where i don't use we uh -huh. but the 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 writer changed it to re we is there a sense there of hey either is okay give, give me some guidance there there oh this is religious Oh, okay. So it's not likely to get real guidance. It's more. Right. It's, and it's, I'm, I'm with you, but then people think I'm cold hearted anyhow with my writing style. So, um, but yeah, the, and I, and sometimes I do it, I actually go back and forth, but you know, I'm not crazy about please do this. And, um, now I would, but I would still, I would say Java 11 support is included in Jenkins 2.164.1 and later. I don't see the need for was first included. Like that? Yes. And see, I'm not even sure that I need to say LTS then. Yeah, that's. How about Java 11 is supported? Right, yes. And does, it, and can we expect that people understand that a dot one is an LTS or, or is that true? Well, that's why the, oh, you were thinking I could safely remove the word LTS. Yeah, well, you were talking about removing it and I'm not, I haven't internalized it enough. Yeah, and I'm I'm not sure. Actually, it doesn't matter whether that's okay. long. It means that anything with a higher number than that supports it. Correct. And even if that were a pro, if that were not an LTS, right. um, Java 11's in it, right? Correct. So keep it short and punch. Okay, good. All right. Spelling fix, indentation fix, remove hard stops from end of bullet list entries. The rest I think are all just fine. Okay, good. Um, that was okay. That was perfect. That was what I needed. Thanks, Meg. Okay. Now, now question is, is that something we should consider codifying in the style guide? The style guide has has other things in it, um, but doesn't specifically talk about that one. Let's see if we look at handbook section here. It's this one. Handbook style guide guides us on how to use links and using for example instead of e.g. and um, why we use section headers instead of bullets, etc. And numbered, I've, I've been busted by new colleagues because I use bullet lists a lot when it should be a numbered list. Right. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I don't like numbered lists. I think because so often numbered lists are hard to keep the numbers if you put stuff in the middle. <coughs> but Okay. You know. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to leave it as is then. Thanks. Thanks for that. Anything else on conventions before we go next topic? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, next one is I've submitted a PR. We, Meg and I actually created the PR last week for, um, for the DevOps world announcement and Oleg reviewed it and said, hey, we really need a page uh, focused on this. It was, where is it? DevOps world. He said, hey, please give me a page on the slash events, which makes sense. We've got uh -huh. a slash events play page for other things. 
like for contributor summits, why shouldn't we have one for DevOps world that happens consistently, we should put it up there. And I've still got to create that. The other pieces I think are, are okay and were in general approved or were no objections. If you've got insights, uh, Mark, to discuss with Alyssa Tong for the content. When these we, events are passed, do we have a place where you can go and see events that have happened, say, in the last year? Um, Highlights of them or something? Well, usually we will blog about them yeah. and describe them there, or we'll put uh, links to the notes, et cetera, or move these into a different place. So it's pretty common that we would find a way to retain the content. But it's not, we have recent blog posts, but we don't actually have a list of the recent events. If I look, I mean, they're probably all in there, right? Uh, correct. We don't yeah. have a, a list of recent events. That That's certainly correct. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that I would like that, but, but that's just mm. me. I don't know. If, yeah, nice, nice suggestion. It would we be certain, especially if they're all blogged. It would be a simple thing of having just you know a list of the events, each of which was a link to the blog that discussed them. Yeah, well, and we've got we've got an easy place to do that here on Discourse, mm -hmm. on community.jenkins.io. We can easily place uh, content there that summarizes. That's what I did with uh, the contributor summit videos. They're all placed on. Here, if I just search for it, Contributor Summit. Uh, oops. Okay, so I have to spell correctly. <laughs> so full sessions, here are the links to all the videos, etc. And so this, this site is a great location for us to just put that kind of content comfortably. Yeah. I just I think she codes Africa is such a cool thing, uh -huh. and it would be nice if people glance. You know, when I see the blog post, it doesn't stick out. It'd be nice if we saw the actual events were sticking out, and I could look and see. Oh, they, uh, you know, right. They're doing hackathons this summer, and, and they're doing right. This, and, yeah, good insight. But, you, you and you're welcome to submit a an enhancement request to the uh, to the Jenkins .io site. I think it's a good idea. Recent. <laughs> recent events would be just as cool as recent blog posts. Yeah. All right, anything else on the Jumbotron change? Okay, next one is upcoming events. So JDK 11 transition, we're going to, this is the Docker images. Um, we will switch Jenkins slash Jenkins colon latest. And Jenkins slash Jenkins colon LTS uh, Docker images will use JDK eleven only. Please, correct. That's the plan. Yes, right. For for the controller. Uh, for controller. Uh, what about for agents? Controller agent inbound agent uh, outbound agent both. So can I still build my stuff for JDK 8 and test it on an agent? Absolutely, because the the agent can then invoke Java 8 to do your build. Ah, so, so the, the agent fact that is we, running Java 11, but it can invoke another one. Right, it can invoke Java 8, it can invoke Java 6 if you need. I mean, it can invoke all sorts of things. No so, reason yes. why the controller would ever do that, right? Or, uh, I don't we think so. no, we really don't want people to build on the controller. Absolutely. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So I've there, there is there wouldn't a, be anything else they'd be doing on the controller that they would need a different JDK. Uh, well, right. okay, there are some use cases, but we've acknowledged that we've got to get off Java eight eventually. Java right. 8's going to reach end of life and. And when it reaches end of life, uh, we better have been on Java 11 for a while. Right. Um, I'm just wondering, I, I got, I just got busted by somebody for having an example of that was calling JDK eight, because we only use Java 11, whether it should, whether we should put a note that those agents can invoke other 
JDKs. Yeah, and, and that we will do, and there will be blog posts. Right, okay. Blog posts, upgrade guide, et cetera. There will be all sorts of things there described to say, hey, be aware that this change is happening. You've got to be sensitive to it. Yeah. Okay. So this is one that the draft Jenkins enhancement proposal document, all want review of it. It is, where is it? I should put the link to it. I've got it somewhere here. Uh, JDK Java 11. Nope, Java 11 has Jenkins default JDK. There we go. Okay. So this is the draft document and would be happy to have comments and feedback on it. I've still got an awful lot to do in it. Um, I'll get it done hopefully within the next one to two days and submit it as, the, as a formal Jenkins enhancement proposal. How much of the rest of the doc is gonna to have to, I'm sitting here sweating with my normal, with my training. Um, how much of the rest of the doc is going to have to be modified for this? Uh, relatively little. Yeah. So there, there aren't a lot of places where the, the, the documentation is dependent on the specific JDK that you're running uh, that's hosting Jenkins. Because when we give you a tutorial on how to use Java, we say compile this generic code that works anywhere. When we say, here's a Python tutorial we're invoking Python without involving Java at all, or, oh, here's a Node.js tutorial. Again, it's using Node in those cases in a Docker image. And likewise with the Java tutorial, we reference a specific Java Docker image. So okay. it's, it's not, not dependent on which JDK the controller is running at all. Ah, that's good, okay. All right, so next topic was DevOps world. So we've got, and for everybody's awareness, this is September 28th through 30th, and then October 1 Contributor Summit. And uh, we have a community track with community speakers. And we look forward to it. And, and I'm actually one of the speakers. Zenab and I will be talking about uh, the SheCode Africa and getting open source more widely into Africa. Uh, one of the things that we most need there is Contributor Summit. And this is where we need planning and coordination. I'm happy to take any volunteers Uh, promotion. Diraj, you say you're willing to assist? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Great. And so we'll we'll pattern it now. Now for for everybody's info, this is during APAC time zone. So with apologies, Kristen, to you, uh, it's on the other side of the world from your time zone but right in, right in Diraj's time zone and sort of in Meg's. Yeah, I was kind of wondering like wh what I, I would be willing to help, but I'm not sure what I can do. It'd be a lot of like pre-setup stuff. Right. I've helped out with other contributor summits, just being in rooms to answer questions, but if there's anything like beforehand that I can help with, I'm fine. And, and that's a good suggestion. So willing to assist as a moderator, yeah, right, or facilitator. Mm -hmm. That's sometimes and, nice to you know to make sure if someone comes in. I think it was more of an open forum, like people could come and go from rooms. So it's nice right. to have someone there to kind of you know greet them, greet them, or to kind of like yeah. <laughs> work as the people who are talking in the room. Um, Nobody ever wants to talk about the fine points of the English language. <laughs> Yeah, the the uh, the docs, docs room was a little quiet, but it was it was nice because um, you know I think the one or two people that did come, it was yeah, it was very 
you know, kind of what can we, or like, what are we working on now? It was, so having a good short, like bullet list of um, popular talk docs topics is um, just like a very quick <laughs> overview. <laughs> That's a reminder yeah, you, if you wanted to join the room is a good idea. That, that is, that's an excellent one. And and this will be exactly day one of the of Hacktoberfest Perfect. as well. So there's there's some some possibility of saying, hey, we may want to dedicate some portion of it to welcome to Hacktoberfest. Here's how you can contribute. Right. Is there anything that's going to be uh, rolling like any type of programs or anything for Jenkins or even like CDF? Like that's on like in rolling up to contributor summit or um is it just kind of the one day uh well so we'll do i i, I hope what we'll do is we'll do active promotion of the event right but but active promotion of the event is usually not enough it will be a i suspect this time we'll register through a jenkins online meetup okay uh, last time we used CDF to handle the registration, they did an awesome job of promoting. Okay. Um, they, the number of registrations was mind boggling. Uh, Jenkins online meetup has been our vehicle in the past. And then we don't have to make people actually enter data that they may be uncomfortable entering. Right, okay. Yeah, good, good one, very good. Uh, we will host it with Zoom again, so Zoom webinar for the presentations, uh, and then Zoom, uh, what do they call them? Breakout rooms. Breakout rooms, yeah. For the uh, discussions and interaction. And, and recruiting first time recruiting presenters for the user presentations is was surprisingly challenging because most people say, oh, I'm not doing anything exotic. And then we, we listen to them and realize, wow, you've got some cool things going on there. So if you, if you hear of users, by all means, help us recruit more people, particularly in Asia Pacific, right? One of the challenges for this is many of the users we, that talked at the last session, we're all European based and their their time zones just don't work for this Asia Pacific uh, presentation. So we need people in Australia, in India, in China, in Japan, in Malaysia. Diraj, how much open source activity is there in India? Um, well, there's a lot due to GSOC mainly. And uh, yes, so due to GSOC, there were some uh, engagement from colleges, college students side. Um, so yes, there, there is a lot going on right now. Okay. Well, so Meg, to give you a, an indication, Oleg uh, presented at a webinar hosted by a student team in India. And I think there were hundreds of attendees. Wow. I, I mean, literally hundreds of attendees at this event. And, and it was talking about how to contribute to Jenkins. Now we don't get hundreds of attendees to our online meetups, so that we were really impressed. Right. All right, so Hacktoberfest, I've got as a separate topic later, uh, weekly change log. So Diraj, do you, do you have a question you wanna share your screen on or should we look at the poll request? What's your preference? Yes, so uh, I want to share the link on our chat. Okay. And it's a four four seven eight. Yes. So I just wanted to know here that there are some, uh, like, if you look at bump access modified annotation from this to this and access modified checker and matrix auth. So which one should I include here and which one should I comment out? So we previous you previously suggested me that I need to look at the same name. Uh, its occurrence previously and look at it whether it was previously commented out or written out. So I looked at it, but some of them were occurring here for the first time. So I was not sure how to decide. Good question. So for me, I would drop those three all from the change log. But now let's now let's test my assertion 
because I could just be completely wrong. So let's look at pull request 5630, for instance, on Jenkins core um, and see if there's something particularly important about that. So closed 5630 is right here. This uh, okay. matrix auth one was included last time as part of some security release. Ah, okay. All right. And this one's release notes fixes a regression, but really that's already described in the plugin release notes. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay with this one being in. I think it's just fine. I would also be okay with it being out. The access modifier annotations, I expect those have never been mentioned before. Am I correct there? Okay, so you are suggesting me to not include the modifier annotation and modifier check. That that was my assumption. It's harmless. If it's if it's painful work for you, I, it's perfectly okay to say I'm just leaving it. Oh, no, I'll do it. Just take a few minutes. So okay. Yeah. So this one, this one, I think the flaw here was it probably should have been tagged as skip change log, but Basil and Ryan did not. Um, did not tag it as skip the change log. And, but for me, at least, I think, I think it would be, that would be a good one to, 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 to not include. Now the others, the support for JNR, that one's crucial to include as is the, the terminology cleanup and yeah. So the only the only two that were any question for me were access modifier the two access modifier roles. All the others look great. Should JNR be spelled out, or does everybody just know what that is instantly? Ah, good question. Yeah. Um, In general, I, I mean, there's exceptions, but I don't like acronyms that show up with the first time without being spelled out. Yeah. What is Java JNR? I don't even know the expansion. Java native access is the new name for it. Oh, Java native runtime. Right, I was thinking actually like the same thing. It's like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, well, so. and, and, and that's that's the danger, right? Is, oh, right. oh, that's right. This is this evil thing that we've we've got inside the code to allow us to talk to native native things on the on the hardware, native things on the operating system. But it's just, and it's really tough because I mean, there's only 20, only so many permutations of 26 letters. So right. A lot of these abbreviations have multiple meanings and it depends. What yeah, is. well, so let's, let's, here we go. Let's take this excuse to, I'm going to approve it and put it as an optional comment. Okay, so. Okay, as opposed to now I've got to expand Java NIO. What is it? Java NIO non blocking IO. Okay. Or new IO, it looks underneath. Okay. Yeah, so Wikipedia in, is more official. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. So here's the proposed remove support, removes, remove support. Is it present? If I remember right, the guidance was present tense. So remove support for remove. And it's not really a colon, is it? So remove support for JNR, change mod and stat. Should both. Java native runtime and JNR be in parentheses. That looks weird. It should be for native. It could be if everybody calls it. It could be for native JNR and then have the parentheses expand it. Oh, oh uh, good. Good point. Like but this. One of what them you're saying. Don't have anything. Right. That's what you're saying, there. right? As opposed to as opposed to Java NIO to Java NIO to to NIO. Java non-blocking IO. 
something like that. Yeah. Via the, okay, whoops. The system property, okay. Oh, yeah. Remove support for native JNR, change mod and stat as opposed to NIO via the system property. B, this system property has, okay, there. Yeah, better, much better. Okay, and now my fixation on sentence per line, okay. Okay, good. All right. So, Diraj, we we did more, I think, than you asked for. Um, to me, this looks great, and I think we're ready to also, go with in it. In the last one, internal one, there are two columns. So, is that right? There are. Oh, oh, good question. Right. Usually, we would prefer. Terminology, terminal, what if we set it like this? Terminology to clean up to fix build time trends, distributing builds. Terminology cleanup to fix build time trends. I know it's a hard sentence to read. Do I? Yeah, so let's if go I look at through, does it? Um, here, let's go find it. Let's let you read the original because Daniel's usually quite good with this. So, all right, here is the difference looking at the screenshots. Here's the before. No, what, okay, what's the difference? What, what should I be seeing differently here? Oh, oh, got it. I'm not further, okay, I'm not sure. So it looks like what he's done is when it's executing on the built-in node, he removes the name of the node. Ah. Let's see if that's correct. If is distributed build enabled. Yes, okay, got it. So if, oh no, if is distributed build enabled. Okay, so if, Scroll down and cut you. Um, why is he using master? That, that's how it used to be. That's what he's removing. Oh, okay. This is him cleaning up the terminology. So whereas ah. the terminology used to show master, it now says, uh-uh. If you're if if we did not if we let's see, let's read the logic. If distributed builds are enabled, so the controller is there. Or no, there are agents Agent. available. So if agents yeah. are available, then it won't show it. And I think I'm not seeing my the proof that I was looking for, but I assumed that. Ah, here we go. The selector says. pass in distributed build is enabled is true. And this thing says, read that. And here's the value for it. And if it exists, then it's going to, to write that data. So yeah, so I think what he's saying is, let's go back to his picture. So this is the, I believe this is the new one where the agent column is removed if the build executed on the controller. Okay. So now back to the phrasing. Okay. So we didn't, terminology we clean up would have been he changed master to controller. No, 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 no. In this case, it is a terminology cleanup because he was able to successfully remove the use of the word master 
Right. And 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 that really is that's even an even better cleanup because in this context, it didn't help to show the word master. So, but instead of improved terminology, why isn't it just remove agent column if build is on the mass is on the controller? Yeah, and that that I'd have to have to I'm it may be that I'm misunderstanding what he's what yeah. he's accomplishing here. Because you're right, that's if it was only don't show master. But then again, why is it really internal? Okay, wait a second. Why is this flagged? Okay. All right. So I think we may have a, an open issue there. This is really Diraj, it's been flagged as internal, but I don't see internal. Is that oh no? He says that it's internal only. So there's nothing to. So since it's internal, that's why you put the internal keyword there. Oh, right, yes. Diraj? Yes. Okay. So it's not internal, is it? Oh, no, no, I, th I will. That's, I'm not sure why, why Daniel said internal mm -hmm. only. That's the piece. It seems like he's showing showing a change that's visible to the user. Go ahead. Is it Kristen. because maybe that it's part of an, it looks like it was a subset and maybe most of that PR is addressing something like this already? It, what's the, is there, is, was that PR delivered? It, it was the, not, this PR oh, okay. is still open. Because I was like wondering this, if this maybe PR that's- is the big one. Okay, because I was maybe wondering if it was covered-ish in that PR already and this yeah. was, just, and it was like a double, word verbiage you, does that make sense like you don't want to put it twice or um, well but, and I wonder, but if it hasn't been delivered that's not good because then it it is maybe it does need to be mentioned here well but but it may be that i'm misreading the javascript because what this is saying is yeah okay i'm just misreading the javascript let's let's look at it again so what this, the JavaScript says is, where'd it go? Okay, it says, if there are no agents, or if there are agents, then distributed builds are enabled and it's going to show the agent column. So if there are no agents, it won't show an agent column. If I read this JavaScript correctly. So that's back to remove the agents column if builds are running on the controller. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I'm not sure. Right. It's, well, it's, it's if there are no agents, then we must build on the controller and don't show an agents column. Don't yes. show an agent column. Right, that's my interpretation of what this what is. There is, are agents, and you run a builder two on the controller anyhow. It will show it, and it will say, it will show the the name of that agent. In this case, it will show master because that change is a part of this larger change that's still pending. Okay. All right. So back to back to our, okay, back to our phrasing. So. So is it, we would re remove, only show the agent column when agents um, are configured, uh, are connected to the, con are available? No, connected to the controller. The controller has agents connected agents defined like that yeah defined because they could be leased right they could be transient they could be right right they might not be actually just attached so is are you okay with that as a proposal i like 
Okay, so I'm going to actually approve it. Uh, optional comments for consideration. Okay. All right, so Diraj, you can decide if you want, to, you're, you're welcome to reject both those. You don't have to accept them at all. Anything else on the weekly change log, Diraj? No, nothing else. That was the only doubt. Thanks a lot. Okay, all right. So then one more topic, and this is, a, this is more of a conversation amongst the group of us, which is there is a proposed pull request here to automate the change log. Uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, nope, nope, it's in the, is it here? No, it's in the Jenkins core repository. Just a minute. Yes, automate the Jenkins.io change log. And the, the reason for the discussion here was I thought that there was a comment from Daniel that he was concerned, there we go. So this is the one that I wanted to discuss here. Um, he notes, hey, if we're losing the ability to copy, edit, and curate change log, why have it? And Tim's response is we can still copy edit. Um, we can copy edit in the pull request and it will preserve the changes. Um, and Daniel's concern was, nobody is going to bother doing that. And my thought was, Diraj, you and I actually may be quite willing to do that. So yes. <laughs> what this automation, what this machinery does is it creates the pull request for us. And then we can at any time go in and modify or submit additional changes to the pull request. Oh, okay. So it's like, uh, like how you are commenting on my PR. That's how we will be commenting to this automatically generated PR, right? Yes, yes, exactly. That kind of thing saying, hey, I think it should be phrased this way instead of that way. Mm -hmm. um, so it's and not going to deploy yeah. automatically. It's just going to make a draft, an automatic draft. Well, well, it, it will both create an automatic draft. And when we reach release day, we would merge that draft and that would become the, the, the official change log. So there's no require, there's nothing that's going to stop an unreviewed change log from getting released. Well, there certainly is in the sense that no pull request is merged without someone saying, I approve this approve and right, I'm merging right. it. Right, right. Right, okay. So, I kind of like it because it makes it, it's there and um, automatic. You don't have to worry about generating it and right or, right but there's still since there is that chance to be able to add comments it might be easier simpler yes. that, that was that was my thinking so okay good so i think there are other voices it's not just me um, okay but the title this is not really automated automating the change log it's automating the first draft of the change log Correct. I, I think you've said it well. It's automating the the right now Diraj and before Diraj I did and before I did it, Daniel did runs a script that assembles the a draft of the change log. Then Diraj will provide copy editing to make sure that it is correctly laid out, that it looks right, and you'll paste an image of that of that revised that revised and copy edited change log in this pull request. What this will do, I think, is create the pull request, but then we still have to copy edit it and probably have to paste the image of what how it looks. Right. I'm just saying that the title, I mean, I worked with automated change logs and they oh. are truly automated. Nobody and you're and so that's what I'm saying automate it's this is not automating the change log, it's automating the draft of the change log. And your, your statement is correct. This is yeah. not, this is not a, this is not a full automation of the change log. This is just proposing a draft that then human beings have the option to copy edit and an expectation that if it's, if it's weak, they will copy edit it. Right. 
and somebody has to approve it before it goes out. Right. So if they approve it without looking at it, shame on them. Yeah, and, and but we've got that. That's a real problem no matter what, right? Right. Okay, Diraj, what's your GitHub username? Diraj. So it's a small D. Okay. And Diraj. O. D H A. D H A. J. Oh, uh, right. Okay. And two oh. J's or only one J? Only one J. Ah, so Copyright you combine the J that's the <laughs> last word for. Okay, got it. Right. And J O D H A. Okay. Not B H A. J O B. Whoops. J O. D H A. B. So it's a J O D H A. Did I get it right? No. So in in J Jodha, you can see it's J O B H A, right? So it should be J O D H A instead, right? Got exactly. it. Thank you. Okay. I, I, my dyslexia or my, my, maybe I'm not dyslexic, but my inability to see the difference <laughs> between the letter B and the letter D is tragic. All right. <laughs> let's see. Amen. And stack scribe. And Kristen, what's your GitHub ID? So um, K Whetstone. Oh, good, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's easy, okay. There it Perfect. is. Perfect, yeah. okay. Felt that we would rather do the copy editing. Would be willing willingly do the copy editing in the pull request from this automation. Okay. So as Meg was telling us about full automation change log, so this one is not because we need to inter intervene and edit the priorities of the change logs according to the style guide, right? So that is the only blocker for it becoming a fully automated one, right? Oh, no, I think I think there is still, there's, mm -hmm. there's still a, a high, well, there are a number of other barriers to full automation. Things like the original pull request doesn't describe it well enough or is badly formatted and the tooling can't extract the, the, the comments. There are all sorts of things that can go wrong there, but this feels like a good first step towards automating it, uh, towards that eventual day where we might envision it would be fully automated, like release drafter. Well, something even better than release drafter does. Right. Okay. okay. So there's there's my comment, and that I think is argument in favor of hey we should consider doing this. Now I've got to do some more code review and see all right is the code working great. Okay, thank you. Um, the, I fear we've run out of time, and I'm I'm reaching end of my my day and my my ability to be functional. Would it be okay if we delay our conversations on Hacktoberfest until next week? Sure. 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 All right. That's it for me then. Anything else before, as we're coming to the close here? And I may, I may on Hacktoberfest, I may start a separate document possibly in, actually, why not? start a separate plan in the a conversation in com, in community.jenkins.io or a google doc i've got to think about that a little more because we we we've got an awful lot of things to do there all right Sorry, Diraj, did you have another comment? No, nothing from my side. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Let's Thank call you. it in. Thank you very, very much.
Enjoy so your much. teacher, Deja, Dirash. 